Okay, now for the book of Joel. Joel. Um, a nation has come up against my land. So at first you think it's talking about an actual nation, but everybody kind of agrees that chapter one is actually just talking about locusts. And the, all of the metaphors seem to be talking about using nations to describe locusts. Then in chapter two, um, it's possible that it's using locusts to describe nations. And because they're using the metaphors in this way interchangeably, and they're not always saying, they're not similes, but metaphors, and just, um, it makes it hard to tell what is what. You, know, you could read it as the whole thing being about actual nations or the whole thing being about locusts, depending on how far you think metaphors are allowed to go. Uh, notice here the day of the Lord, this comes up. It's 12 times used in the Minor Prophets and then six times used in like the Major Prophets. So. Uh, it's got an outsized representation here in the Minor Prophets. It almost always refers to something negative um, and often has a hist um, has a, an ultimate judgment note to it, uh, even though it does, um, it does represent short-term judgment or historical judgment in some cases. Here it, it, you know, it's talking about a locust plague. All right, so the dead Lord is coming. It is near a great and powerful people. I mean, that could be talking about the locusts, or it could be talking about, it could, in other words, this could be a description of locusts, but using um, the metaphor of people, or it could be talking about people now, because like down here it says that these are like warriors, they charge like soldiers, they scale the wall. That's a simile making you think maybe this is actually just talking about locusts, right? <laughs> but a lot of people still think that all of chapter 2 could be talking about real soldiers and not locusts. Uh, here's the most famous passage in Jewel. Yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, with mourning, and rend your hearts and not your garments. So with all your heart, your hearts and not your garments, referring here to a non-apathetic repentance, a real repentance. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Here is, um, you know, that slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. This is the Israelite credo, Exodus 34. 5 through 6. So Hosea was all about love, and this is now continuing the theme of love uh, using the Israelite credo. Um, who knows whether uh, whether he will not turn and relent. That phraseology, who knows, maybe he will turn and relent. You remember that in Jonah, but it appears elsewhere too in the book of the 12. All right. Not much else to say about Jewel. I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. Pretty famous verse there. My people shall never again be put to shame. My people shall never again be put to shame is, uh, you have to wonder, when is this talking about? This, you know, up here, you're thinking this is talking about when the, just, you know, the nation of Israel recovers from this short-term judgment that's happening. But then this has this restoration of Eden, you know, where they are um, unashamed and uh, the final state where there's just no more shame coming. So... It's the near view, far view, and here's here it is again. Here's a short-term thing that we know happened in um, in Acts chapter two, and is a fulfillment of the Ezekiel theme of the spirit in the presence of the Lord. I shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour my spirit and my flesh. Um, and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and female servants in those days, I will pour my spirit. Uh, and then you go to this far view, I'll show wonders in heavens and on the earth, right? But then it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So that, you know, that's quoted in Romans 10 about our salvation from ultimate judgment. When I restore the fortunes of J Judah, I will gather all the nations. So then all of chapter 3 is the oracles against the nations portion. And it's talking about this valley that he gathers them in, uh, the valley. Uh, I will enter into judgment with them there. Um... Beat your plows, shares into swords. So that's kind of a reversal of the usual theme that we hear of, of your swords into plows, shares. The sun and the moon shall be darkened. The Lord roars from Zion, right? He utters his voice from Jerusalem, the Zion land, who dwells in Zion, my holy mountain. Um, the mountain, so, oh, uh, and then this also, that the mountains shall drip sweet wine and the hills flow overflow with milk. And a fountain shall come forth from the house of the Lord. The Lord dwells in Zion. Lots of stuff to talk about this. So this lion roaring from Mount Zion uh, is picked up, you know, just on the next page over in Amos. Um, 
But you've also got here a lot of other themes that you see elsewhere. So the mountains shall drip sweet wine and the hills shall overflow with milk. Um, this is uh, picking up on the themes of the end of Amos, which... Um, no, that's Abadiah, I'm sorry. Um, but here, the mountains shall drip sweet wine and all the hills flow with it. And I'll restore the fortunes uh, is, is also there as well. Um, which, you know, we saw that over here. I'll, I'm going to restore the fortunes. So, and then a fountain shall flow forth from the house of the Lord. Remember Ezekiel 47. Um, so a lot of these themes of the ultimate restoration are, are happening here in this, um, in this verse. The Lord dwells in Zion, his presence there on his holy mountain. Pretty common theme um, in the restoration passages. Let's go on into Amos. So here again is that theme of two years before the... So, okay, sorry. Is the, is the theme of the Lord roars from Mount Zion. That's how the whole prophecy starts out in Amos. Um, interesting thing about Amos is that it seems to have all been given in one year. Okay, we'll just go ahead and go through the book of Amos. Or, you know what? We'll leave this alone. Uh, there was a good overview of the book of Joel. 